So welcome back to Bunter's Yard for uh, something again just a little bit different. Um, today we're doing a steam engine, we don't do, normally do many of those. This is the, uh, the packet from Hornby, they do I think six different models at the moment. Uh, but a really really lovely little model, not terribly expensive. Uh, it's quite weighty which is lovely and um, it takes a 4 pin DCC chip which I've already added to this one. And it runs lovely. So the um, the packet, just out of interest, this particular model um, would have been produced in 1902. Um, so they made about 140 of these in total, I think, in in the real world. Um, and I was a little bit reluctant whether to actually weather it because I just think it's a really really lovely little model. But being Bunton's yard, I thought well we better had do something. So. First thing we need to do is put on a, um, a what I call the I'm now going to call the apprentice layer. So this particular layer is we're, oh, we're just going to lightly brush it over using layer wear in a black and a brown shade, uh, just very lightly. And before it dries, we're going to rub it all off again. Um, but a lot of it will get caught, obviously, around the edges and. Um, by the brows and all the detail it just looks like it's not been cleaned particularly well because I'm sure these weren't cleaned hardly at all to be fair um, looking at the pictures some of these are really really um, grotty so I didn't want to go the whole hog and uh, completely blacken it up but um, we're gonna give it this, uh, this apprentice layer we're gonna call this so while it's still um, not not quite dry I should say we're just gonna polish it back with this q-tip or cotton bud or whatever you want to call it and you'll see it misses quite a bit which is great that's the effect we're after you can use a brush if you choose or a, um, a cloth whatever is uh, whatever is best for you these are small so I'd suggest sticking with the cotton bud or a, or a small brush which I'll brush in a minute on a few of the inaccessible areas but the places like behind the rails and uh, around the edges they're not gonna get um, any sort of cleaning anyway whether it's from the uh, from the rain in the sky or brushing up against the tree or whatever the case may be so that's why we're leaving the uh, some of that black paint there to simulate grime caught in the uh, around the edges and in the details in the rivet heads and so on So best thing to do with this is just a small piece at a time because this uh, flower air will dry, dry relatively quickly and it becomes more difficult to, to take off and uh, that's not what we're after here we need it to come off fairly readily so we're doing it almost uh, as you can see it's still wet in some places but that's great it just works to our advantage and the cotton bud will push the paint into the um, into the recesses and the nooks and crannies and around some of the detail like the rivet uh, heads and so on. And these places that we can't get to we'll just use a brush. Um, as long as it moves some of the paint off and reveals some of the uh, the colour from underneath it's kind of done its job. a small piece at a time don't uh, don't rush this um, because you'll find that if the paint dries it um, it becomes quite tricky to get off especially if you're using just a, a cotton bud you need to resort to then used in IPAs and uh, and thinners of all sorts of things so uh, just uh, li literally just a panel or two at a time and then just clean it back and once you're happy with that do the next one move on to the next bit
and we need to do this all around the loco on every every side and the top and uh, the front and the back and the buffer beams etc So once we've done uh, the apprentice layer, our next step is to um, add some extra grime in and we're, we can really target this where we want it to be. So uh, if there's a particular patch we want, such as these, uh, these bottom edges, we'd like them maybe, maybe around there. And around the chimney as well, I think we're going to go for that as well. We can use the oil paints and we can blend it in and it just creates the uh, darker patch. So we apply this with uh, uh, a fine brush. You really don't want a lot on. It's just a, such a tiny, tiny amount that you need to put on. And then with another brush, which uh, looks the same in this case, but it's not. It's actually it's a brush um, with a nice soft brush, a soft clean brush. You just need to blend that in until you're happy with it. A good thing about oil paints is that they take such a long time to dry. Probably. Uh, you know overnight or a whole day or so on so you've got lots of time to manipulate the paints around and make sure it's sitting where you want it to be if you don't like it you can then just wipe it off uh, with a cloth if it's uh, still wet or you can use thinners to reactivate it and clean it off totally if you choose to do that make sure you use uh, proper oil paint thinners um, not airbrush thinners they're different different beasts so just a tiny amount, so we we'll use those uh, like the rivet lines there. And if we swap our brush and get the dry brush, and you just drag it down very gently. A lot of it will get caught in that detail line, and that just accentuates that. Just looks like it hasn't uh, ever been cleaned, which it probably hasn't been. And just make sure the brush you're blending with is dry and uh, has got a little paint on there as possible so from time to time just uh, give it a, a wipe on a cloth on a dry cloth and uh, get any excess paint off otherwise you're just going to be putting more and more on and uh, you'll end up chasing your towel and uh, this process will take for absolute ever So I wanted around the top of the chimney um, it to be quite heavy with like a, a soot grease residue. That's what this is uh, hoping to emulate. We'll blend it in a bit later on with uh, with a little bit of airbrushing. And so on the roof, um, on the roof we just is using a, a MIG oil brush, so this is already pre-mixed and um, we just need a tiny amount using the same technique, just going to dot it in and then we're going to blend it in with a, with a soft clean brush. And again it will just catch on the rivets and uh, just highlight that detail and just give it a um, an older aged and weathered appearance. If it's too much we can just wipe it straight back we use a cotton bud we'll just take it off it's a little bit heavy and then we'll just blend it in we we'll use a big uh, big soft brush now
Okay, so using the same um, oil brush of uh, rust color, we're just gonna put small amounts just in some places on the body where we want some rust to appear. So these, uh, this rivet line down the bottom seems like a good candidate. So we'll start there. I'm just gonna put a little tiny amount in again with the dry brush. We'll just brush it back just to blend it in a little bit. Maybe around the edge of the uh, of the smoke box door. Again, we'll just blend it in with the with a different brush, with the dry brush. It just picks up the edge of the door and some of the rivets there as well. Then we continue putting on the um, the rust oil colour, uh, just in, in the sort of places where you think that um, the, the rain and the mud would collect and start the corrosion process. So next step is to add in some water streaks. Now we're using a, a fine brush and want to have some, uh, some create a fine line we're going to blend this in the second so you just need a fine line of uh of oil paint i'll put the link in the description for the oil paint if you're uh, interested so draw in a couple of lines where we want the uh, the water runs to appear and we'll come back in a second we'll blend this in use another um, soft clean and dry brush and we're just going to blend that in ever so slightly so it's not uh, such a discreet line it's it's more of a it sort of fades towards the end both sides well once that's done we can then get one of the last stages done and now this is a Vallejo Air um, black in the airbrush and we've got the pressure the pressure on the brush really low so that we don't get huge amounts of paint coming from the brush it's just to add a little bit of extra shade and uh, dirt to the top we're using Humbra weather powder just to add some um, color detail underneath I don't want to sort of paint too much uh, around the running gear uh, because it does easily sort of clog up the uh, the mechanism so just trying to be very careful around here but just remember when you get to the end of the process you need to clean all of the wheels especially on the pack here all four wheels are pickup wheels you just see the pickups uh, there on the uh, on the wheels on the, uh, the far side and you obviously need to clean those rims as well because um, that's where the pickups actually collect the power from the from the wheels and as careful as uh, you may be or I am there's always going to be overspray and there's always going to be something on the wheels so just make sure as uh, as part of the process is that you clean the wheels thoroughly around the rims and on that back edge where the uh, where the collectors pick up the power so we're using a light color you can use white this particularly is a, like a sandy ecru color this um, just simulates some sort of ash from the smoke box that's the idea for that And then we need to seal it all in with our 
Vallejo uh, polyurethane matte varnish. So this is uh, mixed down 50-50 in the airbrush. I'm going to give it two light coats and this just seals everything in and it makes it easier to handle the model so that the uh, the oils and the weathering powder is not going to come off every time you pick the, uh, the loco up. So we're going to give this one coat here, let it dry for a few hours and then we'll come back and give it another coat. And then uh, obviously going to clean the wheels off like I say and uh, get it running on the layout. And that's pretty much that one done. So I really enjoyed doing that. Um, steam engines are not my uh, not what I generally do, I do much of, it's mostly, mostly diesel as you know, um, but I think I'll be doing some more of these in the very near future. Hope you enjoyed this one, please uh, feel free to comment down below, it's always good to hear from you, and uh, we'll uh, hopefully see you again very soon at Bunter's Yard. Have a good day, and uh, we'll speak soon. <laughs>